welcome back to Adobe Live. I'm Hilary Niemer, UX designer on XD, and this is... I'm Jonathan, I'm one of the product managers on the XD team. Cool, so just as a reminder, um, we'll be here today and tomorrow at the same time. And we have our daily challenge as always, so make sure to check that out in the challenge tab and be sure to submit your designs. We'll be reviewing those the last half hour today. And welcome everyone. Yeah. Um, for those of you who joined us yesterday, thank you. For those of you who are joining us for the first time today, I'm Jonathan, um, I'm a senior product manager at Adobe. I've been with Adobe for a while. Um, I actually joined Adobe as a designer way back in 2013, um, and then later on transitioned into product management, and now I'm working on XT. So it's been a fun journey. Um, we're gonna, yesterday we spoke a lot about components and you know how you could use that to collaborate with other designers. Um, mm -hmm. Today we're gonna sort of focus a little more on collaboration, talk about how you can create prototypes in XT, share them with your stakeholders, um, how you can even share design documents with designers, right? Cool. Um, and then we also want to touch upon how you could work with developers and how does XT fit into that whole thing. Exactly, yeah. And uh, I think, you know, we'll maybe start off with doing a little bit of a recap of some of the stuff sure. we talked about yesterday. Yeah, and I think some of y'all had, you know, feedback around, y'all wanted to see um, more you want to see specific things we demoed yesterday around how we built those components. Um, there were some questions around how you could an auto animate between them. So I'll probably do a couple of recaps every now and then on like how um, how components work, how overrides work, how you can actually auto animate. Um, there are questions around the drag trigger as well, so we'll cover some of those. Um, but otherwise, yes, we're going to talk a lot about collaboration today. We're going to also cover certain things like CC libraries and how you could work with different Adobe applications and XD. And uh, in addition to that, we'll also show you how to open up Photoshop documents, Illustrator documents inside of XD. How do you send your content from XD to After Effects? So a couple of those different workflows that Creative Cloud supports as well. Yeah. Awesome. So why don't we actually start off with uh, a quick, um, maybe a quick recap of how components work in XT, right? So what I have here is actually an entire bunch, like a bunch of web pages I've designed. And yesterday, if you were a part of the live stream, you I showed you how to create some of these. Now, one of the things you'll notice right away is these are all actually instances that belong to the same master. So for example, if I go ahead, if I take this master and I bring it on canvas out here, and I decide to start making changes. You notice when I add rounded corners, it actually adds those rounded corners to all the instances I have. Now, a lot of y'all were wondering yesterday as to, well, these two instances seem so different from the master, right? How did you go about creating something like this? So what I wanna to do today is maybe start off with a quick recap and show you um, how I actually created this specific web page uh, inside of XD using components. Cool. So what I'm gonna do is, um, for the demo, I'm simply gonna go ahead and duplicate this to begin with. And for those of you who missed yesterday, Hillary is actually the designer on the XD team who worked on this specific feature. So if you have any questions that are things you wanna see us improve <laughs> around components, <laughs> Comments now. <laughs> um, all right, so let's do this. So I'm gonna get rid of these um, and I'm just gonna ungroup this and make it a regular group, right? So what you're looking at is just a selection of different layers. You can see that it's not wrapped inside a component yet. The first step is I'm gonna make this a component. So I've gone ahead, you know, converted this to a component. The way you know this is a component is because it has a diamond on the top left corner and it has a green sort of border, what we call decoration. Um, the diamond indicates that this is my master. Now, I could move my master off the artboard and keep it in a safe place or I could just work with master. Either ways, it doesn't really matter. The changes you make from master will impact all the other instances. 
So the first thing we want to go ahead and do is, um, let's say we want to create this, the blue card on the right hand side. So the first step is I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this, reposition it out here. Um, now the first thing you'll notice is you can actually perform text overrides in XD. So I'm going to go ahead and change some of this text to match it. Then I'm going to change some of this as well. Okay. So that's done. Um, now the next thing I realize is like, there's a difference in content, right? So one of the things that XD's component workflow supports is structural overrides. What that means is I can actually go ahead and delete certain objects from my instance, and it is still linked to your master component. So this gives you that flexibility of creating, you know, different sort of uh, nested objects inside your component. Now in the interest of time, what I'm going to do is actually just go ahead and copy this from the existing template, just so that I'm not recreating it. Um, and I'm going to paste it here. And if you've used the repeat grid earlier, you'll actually notice what I'm working with is a repeat grid. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually putting in, I'm, I'm, I'm actually pasting a repeat grid inside an instance of this, right? Um, so here you go. I've put this in over here. It looks fine. Okay. Now there are a couple of more things I want to change. The first thing you notice is the color is completely mm -hmm. different, right? But in addition to that, you notice that it does not have those little vector lines in the background. So I'm going to go ahead, select that and maybe, you know, reduce the opacity to zero. I just don't want to delete it. Got it. Uh, and you could delete it. You could, you know, reduce the opacity. Mm -hmm. It's sort of what's your preference. Um, but now let's make sort of, you know, the background color changes. And this is another key sort of feature as a part of components where you can make appearance or style changes to your instances. So I'm just going to open up my asset panel and pick maybe a different gradient from here. Oops, got the wrong layer selected. So I'm going to select my card, switch over to the assets panel and apply that gradient. And you can see in just a couple of steps, how I actually created an instance of my master and I performed a text override. I perform a structural override. Um, I performed a style or an appearance override. And if I actually, you know, resize this, I can actually, I can even resize my component. So that's a size override as well. So here you can see how I resize it. It's a style override. I can even drill down into it and like reposition objects just because it may not have synced correctly. And then one last thing I want to show you is you can also, whoops, <laughs> drill went far too deep. All right. So you can actually also swap nested symbols. So in this case, what I forgot to mention at the start was this little icon on the top over here is actually a sim uh, is a component. I can't believe I just called it a symbol. It's a component. It's okay, it happens. <laughs> uh, and if you decide you want to switch this component with another one, um, you can simply scroll down into your asset panel, figure out which one you need. So in this case, I'm going to zoom in so you can see this happen. And I want to swap it out with maybe the time icon. So I'm going to drag this. And when I hover over another instance, you'll notice that I get the swap icon. So when I release that, it actually switches that component with another one. So again, it may, it was really simple for me to go create this second instance with, um, you know, a couple of changes to the style, the appearance, the size and the text. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about what else we support in terms of the overrides? So just for those of you who just joined, we're just doing a recap on components. So we've just started and all we're talking about is how you create a component. So um, the first the first instance of your component will be your master. And then any um, you know copy and paste instances that you've made, those will have override capabilities. So any change you make to the master will propagate to those instances, but any change you make to your instance will now be um, an override. And so we've talked a little bit about what those overrides are. We have appearance overrides, we have content overrides, um, structural overrides, so you can add and subtract items from your instance. 
And we also have layout overrides, so you can resize it, you can move things around. Um, so pretty much any change you want to make to a component, you can now do. Um, and then, you know, if that that hasn't been overridden when you make a change to the master, um, those changes will still propagate if you've made an over override. So you see how Jonathan is moving the text that hasn't been overridden. So it's still moving in its instance, but for something that you have changed, that um, that change won't propagate to your instance. Yep. So that's kind of the, the basis of the rules for components. All right. All right. So for those of you who joined in, I know the stream was a little late. Uh, what I'm going to do is repeat exactly what we just did with another instance, right? So in this case, let me go fix the rounded corner. There we go. Okay. So now what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to create this other variation, which is like the most extreme sort of instance of this master component, right? So to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is again, you know, make a copy of master or just duplicate one of the instances. Um, so I've done that. Now I decide to go ahead and resize this. Now, the first thing you'll notice is like when I'm resizing this, it's doing a bunch of stuff that I don't intend for it to do, right? Um, so now you have two options at this point. One is I can just double click, get into it and start fixing the mm -hmm. position. Uh, if you want to define all of these in your master component, you could drill down into your master component and fix this, right? So for example, what I'm going to do now is actually go ahead and select all of these objects over here and I'm going to group them. And then you can see I'm, I'm going to set some properties on it. So I'm going to say, oops, did that for the wrong one. Oh, you can see it actually turned on in this one. So I'm going to delete. Whoa. I am going to delete that from there. Okay. Take a step back. So I selected so this. It's a good point that you're talking about when um, you're creating your component, it is really valuable to go in and set your constraints, um, how you would want it to respond if you did um, make a layout override. That way, um, you know, you keep things in sync and you don't have to go ahead and, and make overrides. Yep. And if you're wondering why my text showed up in the second component, and that's actually a I'm glad it happened so y'all can understand the difference between deleting a note, like deleting an element versus just turning the opacity down to zero, right? Now, if I didn't want this to happen, I should have ideally just deleted the text from it. Right. Because I turned down the opacity, it's still syncing across right. the two in that case. So I'm going to delete that and then, you know, move this back over here. Looks like there's a duplicate copy in there. All right, so I've got this over here. I'm going to fix this to my left position out here. I'm going to select this. It's already pinned there. I want to group these two. And again, you can see it showed up even in this one, right? Because I actually turned down the opacity there. Now, what I'm going to do is create a copy of this. And hopefully this time when I resize it, I should get at least a closer end result, right? Now, I'm not too worried of that second button because I want to get rid of it anyways. Mm. So in order to get to this end state, the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is delete this button from here. So I've just got that one out there. Now, again, just like before, I can go ahead, you know, make some changes here. So this is a example of a quick text override. And then I'm just going to copy paste the text from here. All right, so I've done that. Now I decide I want a different button out here, right? Um, let me see if I actually have another component which looks like that button. Oh, in fact, I don't. So in that case, what I'm gonna do is because this is a nested component, what I can do is actually drill down and just perform like maybe a color override in this case. There you go. Awesome. And then I'm just gonna change the label over here. So you can actually nest components inside each other uh, and that way you still have them sync to a master component but you can individually override each instance and then nesting is unlimited so you could yes. create these super smart really flexible components mm -hmm. if you want to yep 
All right, so now the next step out here is I want to sort of fix the background image. Actually, before we go to the background image, maybe the thing I want to do is add all the content on the right, which does not exist. Sounds good. So in the interest of time, I'm just copying it from what I'd already created. I select this component, I drill down, I paste it out there, maybe reposition it a little bit. So I've got most of my structural elements in place and it's sort of getting there, right? Then the last missing piece is the background image in this case. So what I'm gonna do is actually just bring up uh, a bunch of images I have and I wanna drop in something from there. I think, Jonathan, you're about to answer one of our questions. Is it possible to include images in components? Which, yes, is the answer. Yes. <laughs> so you just saw me drop in an image um, and that actually gets treated as an override over there again. And if I go back to my master and I start changing properties, you can still see everything is in sync, right? So an image fill versus a color fill, they all get treated as overrides. Um, so again, just doing a quick recap, um, this was just one example to show you how powerful components are in XT, mm -hmm. where we support a range of different overrides. You've got text, you've got bitmap, you've got style. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are curious about what the style overrides mean, we refer to style as anything that can be changed from the property inspector. So when you're talking about text, all the text properties that can be overridden are available in the PI. When you're talking about a shape, these are all the properties or styles that you can change for that case. So you have that flexibility of style, structural, which is pretty unique to XT again. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, uh, size overrides where you saw I've created three different sizes of the same component. So that's sort of, you know, very, very uh, quick overview of how components are. Um, maybe at this point, we'll just have a quick look and see if there are any questions uh, from y'all. Let's see, does compo components apply to text as well? So you can include text in your components, um, we do have something uh, in the asset panel for text specifically. Mm -hmm. um, so you can add your text to the asset panel if you wanna just open your asset panel for us. Right, so maybe maybe one of the things, sorry? Yeah, do you wanna open the asset yeah. panel? Yeah, what I was gonna it? show was, there are a couple of ways you could work with text, right? Now, if you're thinking about how do you make text reusable in XT, yeah. there are a couple of key things to think about, one is, do you care about reusing just the style of the text layer or do you care about reusing the content of the text layer as well, right? Now, if, if for example, you're creating something where the content is also uh, a part of what you want to reuse, uh, a good example of this might be the nav bar or this little navigation that I have here. I would recommend you convert that into a component yeah. and then just overwrite text. But if your intent was to ideally create reusable text, um, which is only style, then I would encourage you to try out the assets panel workflow where you can create character styles. So an example of this is, let's say I select this piece of text over here. Oops. I can, um, oh, this is already added. So I'm gonna right click and say reveal character style. Okay. So you can see that this character style is already saved to the panel. So I'm actually gonna delete it so you can see how you go about doing this. So I select a piece of text. I can click on the plus button inside my asset panel. It saves that character style for you to easily reuse it. Now what that means is when I switch over to a different artboard or maybe a different text layer uh, and I decide I wanna reuse this, it's a matter of just doing something as simple as this. So I select the piece of text and I click on this. Uh, and in this case, this was a pretty bad example because <laughs> it has a massive font size. Uh, so I should not have probably done that. But you could apply it maybe to a different layer in this case over here. <laughs> and you can see how easy it is for you to reuse your yeah. character styles. Now, and sorry. That, another thing you can do, which I love, is that you can actually go into the asset panel and change the text yep. there. And then it'll apply to anywhere you've used the text. So you could do that by simply right click and say edit. And when you do an edit operation, you get this little pop-up. Now watch what happens as I start changing the fonts. 
you can see that it actually updates them in real time across all of my instances. So this makes it super easy for you if, um, you know, you're just trying to try out different fonts in that case. Um, and then if you like it, you can save it. Otherwise you can just roll back to whatever you want. Yeah. Now, another question we often get is like, oh, how do I know where have I used this character style? You can right click and say highlight on canvas. And if you notice, we draw a blue box around all the text layers that are reusing that character style. And this functionality is even available for colors and components. So if I right click and I say, show me where this is being used, you can see that it highlighted all of these component cards for me, which are using that gradient. Yeah. Um, and you can also do the reverse, right? So if you have some text on your canvas yes. that you want to figure out which one it is in the asset panel, you can also select that and right click and reveal an asset panel. And that's exactly how I actually started this. I wasn't yeah. sure if this was a part of it. So I right clicked and said, um, reveal character style and assets panel. And what you'll notice is we scroll that character style into view and select it for you. So that makes it really easy. Like if you're working with, you know, mm -hmm character styles, colors, or components. So I think there was another question. Can we make nested masters, like a master mm -hmm. component which has two masters? Yes, is the yes. answer, yeah. So you can create a component and then nest that into another component. Um, whether it's your master instance, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. And that's actually a great question because if you look at this copy that I have out here, this is actually a master component and inside it you have a nested component mm -hmm. except that I don't have the nested master out here. And the reason I didn't do that was because I'm reusing this button in a lot of different places which is why I preferred keeping the master for the button in like a separate location. But to answer your question, if it makes sense, you could totally add your master yeah. inside another master. Uh, that's the beauty of this model, right? You have the flexibility of customizing or building the components in the way that works the best for you. Um, I, th I think that's uh, one of the best practices we've talked about is we tend to like to keep our masters on a separate specific location. That way, as you're working with your designs, you don't accidentally run into a situation where you've made a change to your master and that propagates when you don't want it to. Um, and so everything you've done is an override. Right. Unless you explicitly want to make, make that change to the master. So definitely if you haven't tried out components or if you've used symbols in other apps or in XT, like get on board with the new component workflow. This is amazing. I would love to see how you all use it. If you'll have any feedback, you know, definitely leave comments. You can find me on Twitter. Large part of the XT team is out there as well. If there are feature requests, head to user voice, make sure you upvote existing ones or add new ideas. Um, if you want a more in-depth sort of guided tutorial on how to get started with components, Howard has some amazing content. Go watch his videos um, and follow him on Twitter. He has yes. a lot of little tips and tricks that he sneaks out every single day. Super cool content. All right. So before we go ahead with the remaining stuff, maybe let's touch upon one of the the first collaboration things we want to cover today, which is how do you share a prototype in XT, right? Cool. Um, so one of the things we've focused on from day one is building XT as a collaboration platform. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the few tools where you can design and prototype within the same surface without having to switch between applications, right? Um, so what I would recommend is, you know, when you design something, you obviously can switch over to prototype mode. Uh, and in prototype mode, you can start wiring up your artboards, correct? So here what I have is I'm just going to show you a quick example of something really, really complex I put <laughs> together, right? So Goodbye. this is a fully loaded prototype that actually is um, an iPad app for browsing different national parks and learning more about them. So you can see I've actually added a lot of interactivity, a lot of different screens connected together. Uh, before we talk about how you can share this and how you can create this, I want to show you how this prototype actually works. So I'm going to open up my preview window and now this prototype should ideally kick off on its own. So the first thing you'll notice is I'm not even doing anything and you'll notice that it's automatically sort of animating across screens. 
So I created this whole onboarding concept using time-based triggers. So using a time-based trigger with auto-animate, uh, I'm actually sort of animating how this coach mark moves. Now, once that's done, you can see that the rest of this I've wired up using a drag interaction. Um, in addition to that, you can also click and I'm using overlays on top of it. Super cool. uh, so here you can see the overlay has a background blur with some opacity. I'm using another overlay to bring up the keyboard. Um, if I click on this, there'll be a couple of onboarding screens we go through. In fact, one of the other things I want to highlight if you missed yesterday's stream was we have support for pol the Polygon tool as, the, as of the May release. So here I have a simple triangle mm -hmm. that I drew using the Polygon tool. And now what I'm going to do is on the next screen, I'm going to change the number of sides for this. But because the two screens are connected using auto animate, you can actually animate between them. So I'm going to do that once more. So you can see how it actually animates from, um, you know, from one triangle to the other one. And then when I go back to these screens, you can see how I'm using auto animate to create all of these different variations of the screen. I'm using fixed elements on the top, uh, scrollable artboards. And then there's a lot of more stuff that I've packed into this one workflow. You're using like every trick in the book. Yes, this is lit <laughs> this prototype literally uses every single prototyping feature we support as Super of today, cool. right? Um, and again, just you know, just to show you a very complex prototype, uh, I can actually switch between them from the top, and you can see how they're animating all across my screen. Uh, again, because I've used overlays, you can see how the menu can easily be accessed on any of these screens and I don't have to create like duplicate screens over and over again. Um, so, yeah. Super cool. So in the chat, someone's talking about a Howard plugin. I think we need to put that in motion. <laughs> I could use a Howard plugin. <laughs> That'd be awesome. It's like you have a plugin where Howard shows up to answer all your questions. Yes. Like every time you have a question, you just go to the Howard. <laughs> it's almost like a pun, like how? Word. Like, how do you do that? It's like a Howard <laughs> plugin to Howard figure that. out how to do something in XP. <laughs> Somebody's got to build that, yeah. really. Um, all right. So, I think that's a question that just came in. Are these features available now? Are they upcoming? Fixed elements are great. Everything I'm showing you is publicly available, right? So, none of the features I'm showing you right now are work in progress. This is the shipping version of XT. Uh, so if you install the May release, you should be able to access all of this right away. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is like, how do you actually share a prototype like this with someone, right? Um, We've got just a few seconds until the chat and win cut. Okay, maybe let's do that and <laughs> yeah, then let's and come then we'll back to the prototyping Sounds one. good. So it looks like we've had a lengthy discussion on the plugin name for Howard. <laughs> Who needs Clippy when Howard is here? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. And there's a question all the way on the top out there. Oh, but there's gone. so many comments that we kind of lost that one. Yeah, okay. That's okay. I'm sure we'll get more. Hello, Darren. Yay, Amara's back today. Took a look at her screens yesterday. I think this is an opportunity for y'all to ask us questions. Uh, Let's see. Do you have any questions? I think everyone's just doing the chat and win now. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we have our winner, Samuel Ballard the second. Super oh. cool. So I think the prize is uh, Sticker Mule, and the team will reach out to you with more information on that. Awesome. Cool. Congratulations. All right. All right. So coming back to where we left off, yes. um, we are talking about how do you actually share a prototype that you've created in XT, right? Now, the first thing you'll notice is 
um you when you go to the preview window you have a little record icon on the top right corner mm-hmm. and you could actually record this entire thing as uh, a video and send that video to someone right i love this feature because there are times when like you need to send things out to people you're not there to be able to explain stuff yep. so you can make a recording and, and walk people through your prototype there's a small little hidden detail out here which we shipped a couple of months back if you click on this drop down you can actually enable the microphone right which means you can add a voice over to your videos so if you want to send someone a quick video and just have like a voice over that explains it um you could do that using the preview window now the challenge with the video is you know if you get feedback the feedback will probably be over email or slack and it's sort of lost right so i want to show you a couple of other ways in which you could do this um Darren had a question on how to use the drag interaction and then how did I create it. Darren we actually going to circle back to the drag interaction a bit later and I'll actually reconstruct that drag interaction and show you that once more. Um okay so now if you wanted to share this prototype in a way where you could collect feedback the first thing you need to do is wire up your prototype and once you're done with that click on a giant blue button in the top right corner <laughs> that says share. So if I go ahead and click on the share button here you see you you have a couple of different options and today we are actually going to cover all of these different options. Oh. So the first thing I want to talk about is share for review and this is uh this is sort of a quick way of sharing a prototype and gathering feedback. Now when you click on share for review you get this additional screen with a bunch of options right? Um so the first thing you want to choose decide is who can access this prototype is this work that is completely confidential is this work that is okay if it can be publicly accessed if you worked with a google doc you're familiar with some of these uh, right. options you need yeah. to decide so if i click on the first drop down you'll notice there are couple there are two options anyone with this link can view which means it's a public link or only invited people can view which means it's a private link right um so i'm going to start out by saying this is a public link now once it's a public link there are a couple of things you can customize you can choose the um you can choose the title you can choose a couple of other options as well so the first thing is do you want the user to be able to leave comments yes do you want hotspot hints to be available right um and this is an important one because depending on what is the intent of your prototype you may want to turn it off turn it on or turn it off yeah now if you're sharing this with a stakeholder who just needs to review it you probably want to leave it on but if you're using this for user testing with someone you might want to turn off your yeah. hotspot hints right and for those who are new to prototyping the hotspot hints will basically show you like a little blue uh box where your triggers are posted on your artboard so just to give someone a little hint of like what to click next yeah Rakesh you had a question around can we save this as an animated gif at this point we only support video export exporting the gif is something we have on our roadmap definitely go upload that in user voice um and then can you record using a oh right how was already answering that good job how <laughs> it right so coming back here the couple of other options so the next one is show navigation controls um and we'll talk about this a little later There are a couple of more options like should do you want to open it up in full screen uh just so that you know if it's a nice presentation you want it to open up that way and then you still have an additional layer of security uh even if it's a public link do you want to add a password to this so you can actually simply add a password to all your prototypes so that way you have a secured way of sharing your prototype now what i've actually done is i've already created a link you could actually click on create new link or update link So I've gone ahead I've created the link you can see the link is at the bottom here yeah. I can either copy the link or uh, and we'll come back to embed a little later yeah. And just to talk a little bit about the link so the link is not a live link so it publishes whatever you've done at that moment and then you can continue to work in your document and then where Jonathan said you can go and update your link um if you've made changes you're ready to publish then you can go back to that spot and update your link yeah. So you know what you're seeing is a copy of um you know a copy of that same prototype working in the browser. So now if I go ahead click on this you'll see that every single animation that I showed you on the desktop side 
works even in the browser. So what you're sending your stakeholder, who could be a designer, a product manager, and an engineer, they are seeing the literal same exact version of what you created there. So in this case, I go ahead. Um, you can see that all my interactivity actually works out here as well. In fact, even the menus with the background blur, they all render in real time. My fixed elements, all of that works perfectly fine, um, even in this version out here. Okay. So now I'm gonna go back um, to my original prototype. So go back here. Now, because I turned off hotspot tints, I have no idea what to click on, <laughs> but that's exa exactly why you have to decide whether you want a hotspot tint or you don't want a hotspot tint in that case. Now, what happens if you start getting feedback on this, right? So I'm gonna do a couple of things. I'm gonna update this link so that it actually allows me to leave a couple of comments. I'm gonna send this link to Hillary so she can actually leave a couple of comments. And what we wanna show you now is a workflow in which uh, both of us are gonna collaborate. Mm -hmm. Uh, share feedback with each other about the design. Um, in fact, let's see. Could we actually share this with everyone? I wonder if we could post a link in um, yeah. the chat. Yeah. Okay. Oh, maybe I'll share this with everyone, and y'all can all leave comments on it um, and see uh, and try that. All right. So I've got a link out here. I'm going to open that up in my browser. Okay. So the first thing you'll notice is you got a little comment icon in the top right corner, which allows you to actually leave comments. So I'm actually going to go ahead and copy this link and I want to send it to Hillary, right? So I've got everything set up out here. Could we switch to Hillary's screen for a quick second? And then um, I'll just set things up here. All right, so now there are a couple of ways in which you could share your links, right? So the first thing is I've gone ahead and shared this link with um, with Hillary, and Hillary should now have access to the prototype. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my comments panel so that I wanna see any comments, um, you know, are coming out here. Now I'm gonna wait for Hillary to leave some comments. In the meantime, I'm gonna see if we have any questions out here. I wonder what kind of feedback Hillary will give. Hmm. <laughs> That's Jessica. <laughs> there we go. So let's see. So click through. Only positive feedback for Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, the leak savior. <laughs> So, we're not, we're not going to leak anything today. <laughs> so another cool thing that you can do with comments is as I make a comment in here, you can see that you can at mention someone. So if I wanted to tag like another stakeholder um, or something, I can go ahead and do that in here. I don't know why your name isn't coming up. Jessica, we can no longer be friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right. She so. just left comments in uppercase. <laughs> And another thing you can do is actually you can see um, to the right of the at mention here, you can also place a pin in your comments. So I can go ahead and select this and drop that onto your artboard um, wherever you want to leave a specific interaction and then just, or I'm sorry, comment and then uh, just post it. And so that way, you know, when you come back to the designs, your designer can see exactly where um, that comment is <laughs> yep. is associated with. <laughs> All right, so now if I switch over to my screen and I browse through the prototype, you'll notice that the comments that Hillary just left showed up right away for me over there. And if I hover over these comments, uh, I can actually see it what annotation it's associated with, right? Um, now in this case, I have a couple of options. I can either reply to Hillary and say, Thank you for not <laughs> listening to Jessica. To my boss. Um, <laughs> to your boss. <laughs> All right, so, and then that way I leave a comment where then she can see it as well, right? Um, now, there are a couple of things you wanna be able to do with comments. Obviously, when you've written a comment, you wanna have the ability to edit that comment. So mm -hmm. I can go back, click on edit, change a part of my comment, hit save again. 
uh, the other options I can actually even delete a comment or uh, just like any other collaboration tool you can even resolve comments so that way you don't have a lot of comments yeah. uh, Hillary do you want to go ahead and leave a couple of more comments on sure. you know different artboards do we have an option to change a color image to gray in a new build for this? Rakesh, we don't have that capability in XT at the moment, uh, but that's interesting because I'm gonna cover that later on during the day today. Talk about how you can use CC libraries and work with XT and Photoshop together. Darren had another question. Will there be a chance on adding additional types of comments like annotation comments versus onboarding comments? Uh, Darren, that's actually a pretty good point. We are working on improving uh, the types of annotations we support. Uh, definitely go to user voice, upvote some of those. The team is actively working on it. Uh, we'd love to understand what are the specific types of comments or annotations you want to leave. Um, and yeah, there's definitely a lot of more improvements coming there. Jessica's in my prototype now. She's like <laughs> leaving comments everywhere. But because I can delete comments, I can delete Jessica's comments. <laughs> but I won't because I'm nice. So I'm gonna just tag Jessica in a comment. <laughs> there we go. All right, so now if I switch over to my screen, what I'm gonna do is, first of all, if you notice, you know, a whole bunch of y'all are left comments. I have no idea where comments are on which page. Now, if you're wondering, well, how do I come to know about that? Couple of different things. You do get a notification. I have turned off my notifications on my desktop, which is why you don't see them. But you would see desktop notifications letting you know that, hey, so-and-so person commented on so-and-so part of your design. Mm -hmm. um, you would get an email letting you know there's another notification there. Or one of the things I really love doing is if you see this little option here, which I think I'm covering. Yeah, it's just behind your up. head. <laughs> All right. So you see this little radio button here. Oh wait, why am I struggling? Move my browser to the top. <laughs> All right, there we go. So I can actually turn on this little toggle switch. And what this does is it shows me all the comments throughout my entire prototype. So that way I can quickly access all of my comments throughout this entire prototype, right? So let's see what feedback we got. Hugo, very nice. <laughs> Noor, who's Jessica? Exactly my question as well, who's Jessica? <laughs> Uh, Joshua Tree, Jessica is cool. Oh, that, sorry, that's actually my page name. Hillary <laughs> left that comment. Um, Darren loves the columns, thank you. All right, so that's a quick way of sort of going through all your comments without you having to browse through your prototype. Uh, and then as Hillary mentioned, you can even mention people out here. So notice that everyone who commented on my prototype and for security reasons, I don't want everyone's email to be shown. <laughs> so uh, if I actually put the at the rate sign out there, I get everyone's uh, name so I can easily mention them right. and tag them in my comments. Uh, that makes it super easy to like, you know, have that conversation right over there. Um, so that's a really quick way of creating a prototype in XT, sharing that over the browser and getting feedback. Now, one of the things that ha happens very often is you get all of this feedback and then, you know, Hillary says, I don't like the colors. I don't like, you know, the images. And then out of nowhere, Jessica comes along and says, change all of this, right? <laughs> so as a designer, now you need to make all of these changes and you ideally want to do them in a place where no one's watching you. So you can go ahead, make all of your changes to XT. So let's say I make a bunch of changes here. Once you're done with all those changes, simply go back to the share pop-up and click on update. Now the beauty of this is when you click on update, it's the same URL and the changes just get published out there. So what this does is it makes life so much simpler as a designer. You're not constantly making changes, re-exporting images, attaching them to your email, dropping them in Slack, all of that over and over again, right? Um, so this makes lives really easy for you as a designer to just have like a single place where you push your changes uh, and manage all of them. So before I go ahead and talk about the remaining ones, let's see if we have any other questions. Oh, there we go. We got Gayatri on the chat now. Yeah, Jessica um, is our super cool new XD manager and she was on live, I think last week. Mm -hmm. So you, sh you can go back and check that out. Yeah, Jessica's fun. I'll just pulling her legs. She's <laughs> awesome. I love, we love working with her. Um, 
All right, so let's talk about the other option. So the next option you want to look into is only invited people, right? Um, so when you click on that option, the thing you'll notice is, again, you can customize a bunch of options, but then you get an additional option called invite. So what I'm going to do is first go ahead, create a link out here. So this is a separate URL. The thing to note is a public link is different from the private link. So what I'm creating now is a private link where this can be accessed by only specific individuals or invited to the workflow or to the prototype in that case. So that link's almost about done. Now we have Lars with us who's actually working on the share features. Mm -hmm. Lars, these are your features. <laughs> And Gayatri, she worked on linked symbols, which we talked more about yesterday. Or I'm sorry, linked components. I did it. I did? <laughs> I right. called it components. <laughs> so. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and invite maybe Hillary to this. Oh my god, it's going to reveal everyone's email address. Maybe we want to switch to Hillary's screen till I invite someone, <laughs> just so that y'all don't start we'll spamming a, a bunch of Adobe some employees. More comments. We've got one reply. Sam Anderson said, good stuff to Jessica Hi. Moon is cool. We can right. now come back to my screen. Now we can resolve it's safe. that. <laughs> All right, so I've gone ahead and invited Hillary to this. Uh, if I go to share for review, you can see that Hillary is invited out here. And essentially what this means is now the prototype link that I've sent her can only be accessed by Hillary. So even if you copy pasted that URL in the browser and I, let's say I send it to Jessica, Jessica couldn't access that. Um, she would actually get a screen that says, you don't have access to this prototype. Do you want to, you know, get access? And like, there's a button to say, ask the owner to provide access to it. So you have that flexibility of being able to share a private or a public link um, where <laughs> you could do all of this. Jonathan's going to get hundreds of emails asking when Hover is coming out. <laughs> and my response is going to be coming soon. So <laughs> I'll save you the trouble. Don't send me those emails. <laughs> All right, so Gayatri had a question. Where did you get all of those gorgeous images? Uh, it's actually a mix of Adobe Stock and Unsplash. Uh, all these images are like from all these uh, from these two platforms. Yeah. Let's see, do we have anything else? Howard, I'm going to forward all of the Hover emails to you. <laughs> yes, we Rakesh, do. Rakesh, what do you think about plugins like Sketch? I'm, uh, Rakesh, I'm not sure I fully understood that. Are there, are you asking us specifically about like which plugins from Sketch or just plugins in general? Um, for those of you who don't know, XD does support plugins, so you can install a whole bunch yes. of plugins like I have. If you go to the Discover Plugins tab, you'll see there's a whole new range of plugins that keep getting updated. Um, yeah, there's some super fun ones in yeah, there. Yeah, definitely we, check them out. We'll probably talk about plugins, um, you know, tomorrow yeah. in terms of uh, collaboration. Ooh, we gotta respect how many leaks Jonathan saved us for the last 40. Absolutely, I totally didn't plan for some of those, but sure, yes. Um, and yeah, that's a good point. If uh, you haven't seen it. There was a, a, a live with Adobe XD where they actually design, designed a plugin live on mm -hmm. um, the stream. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So before we actually go ahead, I know we have some more collaboration stuff to cover. Um, I thought, why don't we go back to maybe a little bit of prototyping? Yeah. Uh, I can't recall. Was it Darren? Darren had questions around drag. And I know yesterday we got a couple of questions around drag. So why don't we jump in and like, you know, maybe Let's show them how to do drag and then yeah. come back. Yeah. All right, so for those of you curious ones who want to know how drag works, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead, copy this artboard. So I'm going to, instead of just like messing up this file, I'm going to create like another copy of this over here. Okay. So what I have right now is basically this little stack of cards where what I want to do is create sort of a drag interaction between these cards, right? So I start out by creating my start state of the drag. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've, if you've used any other tool where you've had to create a drag interaction, uh, you know it's a bit more complex. You need to define the drag start, the drag end. Um, you know, you need to define things like where your cursor is and like what is the, the scrubbing area of the drag. With XD, you don't need to do any of that. 
all you need to do is create the start state of your drag and the end state of your drag. So in this case, I'm gonna duplicate my artboard. And now what I want is sort of the end state of my drag. So when I click on this little card on the right over here, I want that to be in focus, right? So what I'm gonna do is I wanna move this here. Now you notice when I'm moving, I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it in the same line. So to <laughs> avoid that issue, I'm actually gonna use a new feature called guides. So what I'm gonna do is just set these guides up. So when I cool. duplicate this artboard, this makes my life so much more simpler. Cool, so like, when you set your guides, if you copy and paste that artboard, those guides will stick. Right. Yeah. Plus like, you know, now it makes it super easy to just snap it back to that position. So I'm gonna go ahead, put this out here. So I've kind of got what I need in place over here. Um, and that's it. That's all I had to do to create my drag interaction. Now how do I actually prototype this? So I'm gonna switch over to prototype mode. Now I'm actually gonna select this card because this is the edge that I want uh, for it to drag. Okay. If I select this, connect this over here. Why does Jessica want me to organize her XD files? <laughs> I saw that too. All right. She's so, not gonna up, upvote that on user voice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and select drag from the trigger dropdown. And once you select drag, it automatically picks auto animate as the action for you out there. So once that's done, I'm gonna wire this up the other way around as well. So now, gonna select this, wire this back up here. And that's it. I bring up the preview window. And in two simple Super steps, cool. I'm basically dragging between two artboards, right? Um, I actually showed this yesterday. I'll do it again because I think it's super fun. Yeah. When you drag between screens, if you wanted to like change, you wanted to add like yeah. a subtle bit of, um, you know, animation. What I love doing is sort of just rotating a couple of things over here like this. So watch what happens now when I actually hit was it the screen? Watch how the compass icon on the top left corner yes. actually rotates with my drag. So it's sort of using the drag trigger to animate between the start and the end state so of this, right? Auto while you drag, it's auto animating anything on the screen. Right, exactly. Yeah. So it's as simple as this to create drag triggers. If you want to spend more time, um, you know, understanding how drag works, I'm sure Howard has some really great tutorials on this that you could deep dive into. Mm -hmm. Um, Darren removes all elements on artboard because it doesn't spark joy. I've had that moment as well, yes. <laughs> Clean up all your artboards. <laughs> all right, so with that, let's jump to our next feature, which is, what should we do? Should we do design specs? Should we do CC libraries? Maybe let's do design specs before yeah. we jump to that, yeah. right? Okay. So we spoke about, you know, how you could collaborate with someone else when it comes to getting feedback. Now, how do you collaborate with another designer? So let's say if I wanted Hillary to edit this document. Now we've all done this. We make a copy of the file. We put it in a shared location. Then I'm going to Slack or email Hillary saying, Hey, here's the file, you know, <laughs> make a copy of it, work on it. And copy of a copy. Exactly. Of a By copy. the end of the month, you just have a whole bunch of copies of the file and you can't figure out which is the source of truth, mm -hmm. right? So with XD, we've even simplified some of that. We looked at what is share for review, but there's also an option called invite to edit. And we looked at this a little bit yesterday. Yep. So, so. with invite to edit, you can simply go ahead. Um, first thing you need to do is save this as a cloud document. Yeah. So when you save this as a cloud document, in this case, I'm going to say, all right, so I save this as a cloud document out here. And what this will allow me to do is essentially create um, a single source of truth where I can invite whoever I want to this document. So just like a private link for the prototype, this is also another variation of it where you're just creating a cloud document that can be accessed by anyone. Now, this was probably a bad idea to do right away because this is a massive, massive file. Um, it actually has 4K images baked into it right away. So it's probably gonna take quite some time for this whole thing um, to load up. How many cloud docs can you have? So Darren, there's no limit on the number of cloud docs you can have. 
uh, you could pretty much just work with cloud docs you could work with only local docs it's up to you uh, you have that flexibility right so it's still sort of saving this to the cloud doc but if this was saved i could simply invite someone to it right away so i have the <laughs> compass design system doc that we looked at yesterday um, if you want to swap over to my screen <laughs> so yesterday i invited jonathan to this document apparently i it's not <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just see if this one goes a little bit quicker and then we can share it with him so yesterday we created this design system for compass that had um you know the different colors character styles um we even brought in some components from our internal design system called spectrum um, and then used some of those components in nested into these components for Compass. Right. And then I shared it with Jonathan, so I'll do that again now. He's the first one. I can add a message to him like, you know. Don't hey, mess up my file. Don't change anything in the document. So that's something we talked about for best practices. If you're creating a design system, um, it's nice to have kind of one person uh, managing that file and then everyone else is just kind of using it to, to link to or grab things from. Um, and so this can be a design system, this could just be a document that you are both collaborating in. Um, and then once I've shared it, I get that little green pop-up that said that it, my invite has been sent. And then, you know, if I come back to <coughs> invite to edit, Jonathan will will appear there and I can see I'm the owner and if I'm really mean, I can kick Jonathan out <laughs> at any point. <laughs> All right, so that's a simple way of sharing files. But so quickly to recap, we just showed you how you could share a prototype uh, as a video, like recorded as a video with voiceover. We looked at how you could publish a prototype uh, which could be accessed in the browser. Um, and you could do that either using a password protected one, a public link, or a private link where only specific individuals are invited. We looked at how you could work with other designers where you share your document and have a single source of truth. Now the last one is our favorite one. How do you work with your developer? So one of the things we, we've all spent a lot of time doing is something like this. Like you'll actually drill down into, you know, specific things and like start measuring stuff up and like write the value of like what is the spacing and the the padding and all of those little things out there and it it's a really time consuming process to create manual specs right but one of the things we've simplified with xd is the ability to publish a design spec mm -hmm. so if you go to the same share pop-up you'll see an option called share for development um now, when you have share for development, when you click on that, again, you get a bunch of different options, right? And they are pretty similar to what you had when you were publishing a prototype. So what I'm gonna do is I've already created a link. Uh, I'm gonna open up that link out here. Now, the beauty of this is your developer does not need to have XD. All they need is a browser, which I'm pretty sure they do have. <laughs> so all they have to do is access that link inside of the browser. Now, the first thing you'll notice is the way we show the developer the artboards is the same way you've organized it inside your document. So if there's a specific way in which you li like to lay out your sitemap or like the flow, mm -hmm. make sure you do it in your document and the developer will see the same representation. Yeah. Couple of things that are different from this view versus the prototype view. If I hover over specific artboards, you can see how it actually shows me connections between them. So that helps me understand as a developer, it helps me understand what's the connection between these different screens. So if you remember, you would ideally have to draw arrows and say, clicking here takes you there, clicking there takes you here. That's all gone. Mm -hmm. If you wired up your prototype, all of those interactions are available to the developer to quickly view and understand what's the connection between all of these screens, right? Um, that's the first step. Now the next step is as a developer, I actually want more specific information. Mm -hmm. So all I have to do is select an artboard by clicking on it. And if you notice the minute I click on an artboard, a couple of things happen. First of all, I'm actually getting all of, I'm getting a full view of that artboard right away for me. 
So as a developer, I can view the whole artboard easily inside the browser. Mm -hmm. On the right hand side, we call this a property inspector where you get additional information. So I get the size of the viewport. I get the size of the design. And it's important because if you notice the height of my artboard is different from my viewport right. size. So this helps the developer understand what is the landing. Like if you're building a web page, what's the landing, uh, the section which is sort of the landing area for the web page, right? Mm -hmm. So they can customize the viewport, the height or whatever. The next thing you'll notice is you get all the colors, you get all the character styles, and you also get information about interactivity. And I'll come to that in a bit. I want to spend some time on the color. Okay. Now we've spent days after days specking out color values, specking out font values, font sizes. You don't have to do that anymore. With mm -hmm. XD, all of that is automatically generated for you. The best part of this, if your developer decides they are not working with hex values, they can actually toggle the values in the browser. So you don't need to do all of this additional work around, you know, switching color formats. They can just switch different formats in the browser itself. Same thing applies for character styles. They can simply click here, switch from pixels to points, uh, all of that in the browser itself. Now, the other cool thing I really love about this is when you hover over a specific color, it reverse highlights where that color is being used on my canvas. So as I'm hovering over different colors, it starts highlighting which objects are using that at the moment. The other thing you'll notice is when I hover over character styles, it's actually it'll actually show you which character styles are leveraging um, that specific font family. Um, in addition to that, what you'll notice at the bottom is I actually have an interaction section. So as a developer, I can quickly get an idea of which things from here are triggers and what is the easing function, what is the duration, all of that. Uh, let's see, we have any questions. How does the artboard handle fixed elements on the design spec artboard? So that's a great question, Darren. Right now, when you come to design specs, it's a static preview of the artboard. It's not an interactive preview. Having said that, that's something we are actually working on improving so that the developer can also preview the interactivity and like, you don't have to publish a prototype and a design spec. Yeah. You'll be able to publish one link and have access to both. So that's something we're actively working on for sure. Now, the other thing I love about design specs, and I'm sure you all appreciate this, is when you click on objects, you actually get measurements right away on your canvas. So this makes it so easy for you to actually get different values for what padding, margin, and you know different objects are gonna look like. Uh, daring to answer one of your questions around, you know, how does the developer know if something's fixed? When they select a fixed element, you notice we give them a green. Uh, this is not green. I can't believe I just said <laughs> green. Um, you get this little badge on the top, which indicates that you know it's a fixed element. So that helps the developer understand that, oh, this element has to remain fixed when it's scrolling. Uh, in addition to that, you can click get measurements. Now there are two things we've all struggled with. The first thing is content, and content could be two things. Uh, text content? or images and icons. Mm -hmm. Now, if this was an actual design sent over to me from Jessica, <laughs> um, I would be emailing Jessica right now saying, hey, can you send me a Word document with all of the copy for this design? I don't wanna have to sit and type everything. And since this already has the final copy, I would hate to have to use Lorium Ipsum. But with design specs, you don't need to do that. So if you select a text layer inside your design specs, you can see we see a little content area at the bottom. This content area allows you to quickly copy all the text right from your design spec. Just from one click. Just from one click. Super cool. So in one single click, all I had to do was click and get all of my content right there. Now the same thing applies for images. As a developer, I would constantly be slacking or messaging Jessica saying, give me the background image. Give me the icon over there. Give me this image. Give me that image. Now. One of the things you can do in XD is when you select a specific object, like in this case, let's say I select this icon, you have an option in the property inspector that says mark for export. Mm -hmm. And if I select this box, what it means is when I'm publishing a design spec, all of those assets will be made available for the developer. So in this case, you notice that um, 
I had already marked a bunch of different elements as available for export. So as a developer, I can now quickly select this image and say download as PNG or download as PDF. If it's a vector icon, I can choose whether I want to download it as an SVG instead of a bitmap. <laughs> so I can do this whole, you know, batch download, uh, you know, of assets in one single click. So that's how powerful design specs are. You can actually download assets, get your content, get all your measurements, layout, and style properties in a single click. Super cool. How, let's see, Samuel had another question. Or did we miss anyone's question on the top? I, I think Howard's answered that one. So what's Samuel's question? How do you stop drag animate from snapping to the ends of the objects between artboards? Aha. Uh -huh. Samuel, I think what you're asking for is another feature that the team is sort of working on, which is called scrollable groups. Mm -hmm. So right now with drag, we will snap to one of the ends. Yeah. But if you wanted to create like a free form scrolling option where as you scroll, it just stops on, you know, whatever you last, um, you, you sort of pause that. Right. Uh, you need an ability called scrollable groups, which we are working on. So that's another feature that we can help with. All right. Jessica, my response would be... <laughs> I don't know what that yes. means either. We're going to have to follow up on that. Um, <laughs> but only to Jonathan. I feel the love. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's see. Howard's got the rest of the stuff. Okay. Samuel, the snapping is not specific to PC. That's how it works on Mac as well. Yes. Uh, so that's the way in which we build the feature. We definitely hear you, and that's why we're also thinking about how we add support for scrollable groups. The dimensions of the pic of the elements and pixels only can we choose RAM, M, or percentage. Uh, that's actually a good point. At this point, I think we only support... You can change the format, if I'm not mistaken, for text properties to pixels and points, but that's a really interesting question. Can you change that for layout? Um, I think the answer is no, but that's actually good feedback yeah. for us. Uh, I would actually say head right away to user voice and like, you know add add a feature request to be able to view measurements in different formats, um, and that's something you know the team can definitely look into for sure. How about blend modes in XD? I heard it's in progress. When? Yes, in progress, and we cannot reveal the details, but definitely look out for that. We are blending it together. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> Um, I wish I could just tell you when everything's coming, but to be honest, it's not like I know when it's coming. We are still working on it. Yeah. <laughs> so a part of this is just like, you know, as things get ready, we will ship them. We are not holding it back from yeah. you. Um, I may have missed something. The developer can just download the assets right from design specs. I would have to send them. No, you don't have to send them the assets separately. Uh, when you're designing and you're working with XD, you have the option of selecting different objects or images and clicking on this little checkbox here, which is called Mark for Export. Now, if you keep doing that for all your images and for all your objects, when you head over to this and you say Share for Development, you'll notice there's an option that says Include Assets for Downloads. Now, if you do that, when a developer previews that artboard, they would see all the assets <laughs> that you've marked for them to be able to easily reuse. I'm not sure why those remaining images didn't load. Um, Oh, they did probably, but you know what? They have like opacity or background blur, which is why they look weird. Um, <laughs> Hillary would be a great celebrity interview. No. <laughs> yes. I know what I can say. Yes. Um, all right. So that's sort of a very quick overview of how design specs work. Um, you know, th these are just different ways in which you can still use XT work with other designers, stakeholders, developers. And the beauty of all of this is like none of them had to learn how to use XD or had to install XD or for that matter, even have to worry about what tool this was created and right. Totally. Um, so that's that's a quick glimpse of how you can collaborate uh, with other stakeholders, designers, developers using XD. Yeah, cool. You wanna add anything else before we jump on to the other parts? Uh, actually. This this will be a fun thing. Uh, do you have any examples of like yeah. prototypes that we've created on the XT team where for features that you know we've shipped? 
For features that we've shipped, I don't think I have something I can pull up immediately. Maybe okay. tomorrow maybe tomorrow when, when sure. we hit presentations I can come back with something. But okay. I do have um, something I could bring up quickly. Jessica, I'm trying to get her to sneak something. Didn't work today. Yeah. So um here I have um, what we call one of our XD UI kits. So we're going to switch over to Hillary's screen. Um, while that's happening, Vince, does this export any code? Not at the moment. Uh, we don't export any code from design specs. That's something we're actively working on. Uh, definitely go upward to it in user voice. If you do like using Zeppelin, XD does integrate with Zeppelin. So if that's a tool of your choice, because you care about code snippets and you require it, you can still use XD and Zeppelin together. Mm -hmm. So this here is an example of what the team uses to collaborate. So, you know, we have one one designer who manages this document, Carmen, just right here. And so basically um, what this has is the last update. It has some best practices for using the document um, because we use multiple builds of XD. You know, it's titled like, Please open in public build only <laughs> so we don't have any conflict issues. Um, but what you can see here is, um, and I actually think Sam and Talon uh, published a version for people to use so they can design features for yep. XD. I believe that's on Behance. Um, but here's, um, you know, like our Mac window that we use, our toolbar, and some different components. And so if I zoom into one of them, you can see here that a lot of the masters are here. So now this has been shared with our whole team. We can link to this document and start using these components in our documents um, to create consistency. And then if we look at maybe a little bit more detailed example, zoom in up here. So here I have, you know, our transform box. So this is what we've got here. Um, I can, you know, use this in my designs and with overrides, I can actually make changes. So say I want something to be fixed position um, or I need to add something into this. I can go ahead and do that without breaking the symbol. Right. So right. cool. Yep. Awesome. And just a quick reminder, like don't forget to submit your work for the challenge. Um, we're probably 15 minutes away from getting there. Yeah. Um, so yes, it will take a bit of a while to upload, you know, depending on what you've created. So make sure you start doing that right away. So once we get to that, we have everyone's designs to review. Uh, I see Damien just joined the stream. Hey, Damien. Um, Damien's another great guy. If you don't follow him on Twitter, you should. Uh, he works as, on the XT team with the rest of us. Uh, always out there meeting with customers, doing a whole bunch of fun stuff. Awesome. So I think that brings us towards um, one last piece around collaboration that I want to talk about today. Um, and I'm trying to recall who asked me this question. So I'm so sorry I forgot your name. But someone asked a question around like, hey, can I change an image to like maybe grayscale right inside of XD? Mm -hmm. And the answer is no, you cannot. But XD is a part of Creative Cloud, right? And mm -hmm. it does work pretty well with Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects, a whole bunch of other tools. So what I want to show you now is like, we just looked at how you collaborate between different individuals, mm -hmm. but how do you collaborate between different applications? Mm -hmm. So if you are using XT, how do you work between XT and Photoshop or XT and Illustrator? Or, uh, you know, if you've created an assets in any other app, like how do you work between all of these? So the first thing I want to talk a little bit about is Creative Cloud Libraries. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who don't know how Creative Cloud Libraries work, if you head over to the View option out here, you will see, oh, my bad, it's in the file option. You open up Creative Cloud Libraries right from here. So I go ahead and do that. And what you'll notice is it actually opens up um, this little floating window. And uh, I've created these Creative Cloud Libraries inside other applications. So I've created some of these elements using Photoshop. I've created some of these elements using Illustrator. And now I'm quickly reusing them inside of XD. So to give you a glimpse of how this works, right? So let's try this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead over here and maybe delete some of my content. And I have colors, I have character styles, and I have graphics. It's pretty similar to the assets panel that we have in XT. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop a vector illustration right here. This is huge. 
So I'm gonna reduce the size of it maybe. So I place this out here. Now the first thing you'll notice is that it actually has a little badge icon on the top left corner, which indicates that this is actually a linked asset, right? Um, now there are a couple of things I'll wanna do. The first thing is I wanna get rid of the white background. Now, if you wanna get rid of the white background because it's a part of the original asset, you will have to unlink this. So I can go ahead and say unlink graphic, and then it's pretty much like a regular vector illustration with every single path that you can completely edit. So I can go ahead and delete the background in that case. However, if I wanted to use this as a linked asset, mm -hmm. the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna make changes to this. But because this asset wasn't created inside of XT, I need to figure out where it was. So I'm gonna simply go ahead, select, right click and say edit. And what this is actually gonna do is, I don't have to worry about which app was used to create it. Creative Cloud libraries will figure out which was the app that was used. And in this case, it's Illustrator, so it's gonna go ahead and open up Illustrator right there for me. Uh, in fact, even open up this specific asset without me doing much. So it's gonna open up that specific file for me where I can go ahead and make these changes. So now that this is loaded, I can actually go ahead out here, select this. In this case, I wanna drill down into this. Maybe change this color, right? Oh, what did I do wrong? <laughs> Don't know. Oh. I feel like such a noob sometimes when it comes to like working with Illustrator just because I've not used Illustrator in a really, really long time. Hillary, you gotta help me out. You're excused, you're a PM. <laughs> oh yeah, I can play my whole PM card right now. I'm not a designer, I don't know how to use Illustrator. Uh, something see. janky about... It it's actually probably grouped maybe. Selected there. Oh, there we, oh go. there we go. See, a PM knows everything. <laughs> I figured it out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and change this to maybe an orange in this case. And once that's done, I'm gonna hit save. Now what essentially I'm about to demonstrate is how this asset was created in Illustrator, added to CC libraries, then reused in Adobe XD. Mm -hmm. Then I decided to make a bunch of changes right inside of um, Illustrator. Mm -hmm. And my hope is that these changes also show up in XD for me. So when I go back to XD, you will notice that first of all, it's updated inside of my panel and it also updated it on my canvas there, right? Um, so that makes it really, really easy for me to make changes. Darren, I can't stop laughing now because you just <laughs> called me out for the PM card prizes. <laughs> I use that every now and then. Um, well, so, so this is a little bit different than linked symbols, right? So, or sorry, linked components. Yep. Um, so for one, you have to go back to the original um, application in order to update it. So with XD, you know, when they're linked, you can make those changes right then and there um, on components. And also when those changes come in, you have that ability to decide whether or not you want to accept those changes. And exactly. this one's just going to be made automatically. Right. And I think the question that we had earlier around, well, could I make an image grayscale? This would be the perfect way to do it. Yeah. You open up that image in Photoshop, add it to CC libraries, use it inside of XD, and at some point you decide this needs to be grayscale, right click, edit in Photoshop, you know, maybe adjust it, yeah. convert it to grayscale, and it'll update for you in XD. So this is how, you know, we sort of allow you to work with Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign for that matter, um, just reusing assets between all of this. Linked assets is easier to say than linked components. Ah, mm, good tip from the designer feedback. herself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What other feedback do we have before we go on? So yeah, that's a quick glimpse of what CC libraries would enable you to do. Uh, again, sort of, you know, when you're working with a large team, there are going to be designers who prefer working with Illustrator or prefer working in Photoshop. Uh, this still gives you the flexibility of collaborating with them over specific assets, right. colors, character styles, all of that. Um, and then again, one of the things I actually love doing is sometimes bringing in an illustration. But if I want to make changes to this, I simply go ahead, um, I say unlink, unlink graphic, and then I actually go ahead and convert it to yeah. a component. Oh. So I make it a local component, which nice. I can work with. So then if I make changes, those are all in sync across my nice. document. 
Uh, all right, awesome. Now the next thing we should cover is, well, what if you're not actually working with just assets? What if you have like a whole bunch of design files which are created in maybe Photoshop, maybe Illustrator, or even Sketch for that matter, right? How do you work with some of that content? So what I'm about to show you is the power of undo first. Um, <laughs> after I'm finished doing that. All right. So let's say you have a bunch of, you know, um, work that was created in different um, documents. So let's say I go to this folder. You can see I've got a bunch of different things here. I've got uh, an XD document, which we spoke about yesterday. I've got some illustrations created in AI. I've got a PSD file. I've actually got even a sketch file, but I want to open these up in XD. So if you didn't know this, you can actually open up Photoshop, Illustrator and sketch documents right inside of XD. So I'm going to go ahead, say file, open your computer. And actually, you know what? I'm going to make this a little more simpler. I'm going <laughs> to get rid of this. All right. Get rid of Illustrator. I'm going to create a blank document and then just drop this in here. Oh, maybe I can't do that. I think My you bad. drag it to the dock and just open it. Yeah, there. I could do that as well, but you know. Is it, is it, is it going to do that? Yes, it did. And boom, I just opened up an Illustrator document right inside of XT. Cool. Um, if you don't believe me, look at the layer panel where everything is parts and parts <laughs> and parts. Um, so yeah, this is an actual yeah. illustration created in Illustrator, uh, completely editable inside of XT. Yeah. Um, all the points, all of that, all the goodness. Yeah. So um, th this is one of the powers of XD is that we integrate so well with other apps in the Creative Cloud. Yeah. yeah. I think I accidentally drew a cap. <laughs> I feel proud. <laughs> uh, no, I don't a stop. backwards hat. Backwards Love hat. It. All right. Enough of this. All right. Okay. So <laughs> one of the other things I really loved. Oh, and maybe this is a this is a good shout out for. Um, the one of the plugins I love using, which is called Undraw. So if you go to the Undraw plugin, you can get all of these cool illustrations that you can reuse um, for your projects. And this is a really, really awesome plugin. So I actually used a lot of these from here. Uh, looks like Howard just posted a link to deep diving into how to open up AI files with XT. That's awesome. Do you ever combine animate with XD? Samuel, not at the moment. Um, we sort of focused on adding screen design specific prototyping capabilities in XD. Um, so that's why we've not sort of integrated with animate yet. But we do have something interesting, which is export to After Effects. And I'll talk about that in uh, a bit. Yes, this is a pretty cool monster. Um, all right, so the next piece. So we just spoke about Illustrator. Oh. Before I leave, one thing I really want to show you is select all your artboards and then just click on the plus button to extract all the colors from your illustration, uh, which is again pretty cool because now you could easily edit your illustrations by just changing the color from the assets panel, right? So for example, if I want to deal with uh, specifically this purple over here, I'm just going to right click and say reveal color in the assets panel. Uh, it's right down here. Now I'm going to say edit. And you can see as I change that, all my illustrations reflect that in real time, right? So that makes it awesome. Chris is in the house. He's finally, I was waiting for Chris to join us. Um, he's definitely going to call me out for a bunch of stuff, but I love that. Um, all right, so we just looked at Illustrator import. Let's try and do this with Photoshop as well. So now I'm going to go back to my folder, drag this, drop it here. And what I'm about to do is actually open up a Photoshop file right inside of XD. And you can see how lightning fast it is. Um, all of my text images, everything is intact so I can edit text. You can see the property inspector allows me to make all of those changes. Um, all of my images, everything can be adjusted the way you want. 
So these are just some visual explorations for layout that was done using Photoshop. And I could actually just copy paste all of this and continue working with it in XD. Um, do you have a question around how could you import PS files into XD? It's really as simple as just going to file open and just picking a Photoshop file. And Howard's got your back with a link. So Howard can, you know, if you watch that video, you'll actually get a much better understanding of how this works. All right, so with that, we've just covered Photoshop. We've covered Illustrator. Let's even do Sketch. So if you have a Sketch document and you want to use that with XD, just drag your Sketch document onto the XD app icon or open that up through File. And what we'll essentially allow you to do is open up even a Sketch document inside of XD. And Whoa. this is actually a massive sketch document, <laughs> which I just loaded in XD with no issues whatsoever. Um, you can see panning, zooming, butter smooth, no <laughs> issues. Uh, I can actually even select stuff, drill down, I can edit text. Uh, this is literally like if you had actually designed it in XD, like there's yeah. nothing special about this file that does not work with XD. And I can head over to my assets panel. Boom, extracted colors, character styles, even the symbols that you create in Sketch yeah. come over as components inside of XD. Yeah, and we will generate a master for you. So if you don't see it on Canvas, you can just right click edit master and you'll see that right. and you can use it just as, as you would components in XD. Mm -hmm. I see Chris has already started with his comments. <laughs> Sorry, I was fighting some mannequin this morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know the joke, I did post about bumping into a mannequin day before yesterday and I apologized to the mannequin, <laughs> which was really funny. So Chris keeps rubbing that in for some reason. <laughs> All right. Um, Chris, how smooth, butter smooth. Yes, you answered your question. <laughs> I'm happy that XD now has case transform feature. It is important. Yes, there's a lot more coming to text, so stay tuned for that. Um, toast. <laughs> what's that? XD is butter, needs some toast. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Jessica? XD does have toast. Like when you have a missing font, there's a blue toast, toast that message. pops up. <laughs> so we do have toast. Um, is Figma support coming soon? Actually, I would say go upload that on user voice. We would love to understand, you know, what kind of support you would love to see between XD and Figma. Is it because of specific design features, prototyping features? Uh, that'll help us sort of, you know, figure out what's the best integration we can build between the two apps. Uh, did the mannequin forgive you? I don't <laughs> think so. All right. And the last thing I want to talk about when it comes to these features was export to After Effects. So for this one, maybe. We're about just... 10 seconds away from design feedback. So if you want to post your daily challenge, go ahead. Do All that right. soon. You know what? Let's save, let's save the export to After Effects for post the design challenge. All right, cool. Because by the time I finished saying that, it was already time up. Cool. All right, so we're going to take a look at a couple of design challenges here. So we've got our first one from Alexander. Ooh. So let's see. So day one, splash screen and landing page for a movie app. Nice. Cool. So we've got our <clears throat> splash screen here on the left, super clean. And then here on the right, we have new films up top and some popular films. Um, a cool header here and we've got our navigation down at the bottom so these are super clean like you know yeah. you have oh and we have day two screens so day two is the login experience for a movie app so um you've got your login and then a sign up screen pretty cool yeah the first thing that stands out for me is you know, I really love how this is laid out. Mm -hmm. uh, what would be awesome is also like having this as a click through prototype yeah. where you would actually click through all of these screens. You could totally do that as well. Yeah. That would be another fun way of actually testing it out. But this is like a nice overview of, yeah. of the days you've spent and the things you did. So day three, we have three, four, we have home screen and hamburger menu for a movie app. So this is cool. 
Five points for using a background blur. Yeah, Jonathan loves his background, <laughs> background blur. Yes, if blur. you add a background blur, you're my friend. <laughs> Um, and then we've got a browsing experience for the mobile app. So this is my favorite screen. Yeah, like a detail page with some uh, information, director, um, and some photos. You know what would be really cool on this page? If the background image was fixed and you could just scroll the pink content on top. The gradient that'd over be, it, yeah. That'd be really awesome. That'd be a nice transition. But even this looks super awesome. Yeah. Super clean. Love the color palette. And then the actual playback screen. I like how you went to like a dark background to really highlight the content for this. That's super nice. And then full screen. Ooh. Really clean. It's pretty rare that yeah. I ever see someone create a prototype where they, they actually switch to like landscape yeah. and portrait, which is good. I yeah. love seeing all of those little details like what happens if the user flips your device? I love um, that, and it and it's works super well for um, movie playback. That's definitely something you'd want to see. Mm -hmm. And then we have this is super in depth. We've got the um, account setting experience for a movie app, so you can come in here and customize your um, settings. So recommendations you can turn on and off, Wi-Fi only streaming, and autoplay episodes. And then some other things like parent control. Love that. And then we've got kind of a card browsing experience um, in the for your recommendations. I like this. It's kind of similar to some of the stuff you had in yeah. Compass and could do some drag animations here. Yeah, this is a really cool design. Yeah. Oh, and look oh, at we even video. have a video. So let's take a look at the video real quick. Look at that animation. Well, I take my feedback. <laughs> he did. Oh, yeah. And he's using drag triggers. This yeah. is perfect. This is super cool. Love the use of prototyping here. Oh, Overlay. That background blur. Yeah. Got some toggling on. I hope you use components for those. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Love it. I love the transition here for Trag. Wow. Pretty good. All right. Yeah, this is a super clean, pretty in depth um, experience here. Yeah. It's super cool to see. You know what this reminded me of was something similar I prototyped a while back. Um, and like the thing that stood out for me was the little film reel inside yeah. the word movie. Yeah. Uh, I actually, like if you if we switch over to my screen, I just wanted to quickly show you something that I tried out. Um, I actually created this rotating Love reel that. by just animating between different rotation values. So that might be something you can quickly try with yours as well. Like, yeah. you know, if you wanted to add a quick rotation to your reel, um, you could use auto animate and just change the angle of your rotation from zero to 360 and have a time loop between the two screens. Super cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I let's go back to the prototype. All right, well, this is awesome. Let's take a look at the next one. So here we've got a XD link, and I think this is from Kale. Not sure if that's the fir first, the whole name or screen name, but um, so it looks like we have <clears throat> a uh, basically creating a private or public link here. Mm -hmm. So let's see where. I think it's got two odd boards. So. Okay, I'm not sure if there's a Maybe trigger just... I'm missing, but mm -hmm. the next page we've got your user profile and your user links. So this is like a <clears throat> bunch of your different links you can click on. I think it would open up another link, I'm yeah. guessing. And this is, it's always interesting to see how like, you can use XD for either high fidelity design mm -hmm. or even for like uh, mocking up your thoughts or yeah. concepts or yeah. like wireframing. Or if you're really early in your design process, right? Just being able to like take your thoughts and quickly visualize them. Um, this looks like it was created using the repeat grid, which is again a yeah. super great way of like just reusing your content. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I love what you're saying there. Like, XD is a super good tool to just like quickly get your thoughts down using tools like Repeat Guide can help you just get it done really quickly. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, iterate off of that. And the fact that this is a prototype, you could now share this link with someone, get feedback right there on your design, right? Yeah. So this is this is a great way of like making uh, making a very conscious choice of how much you want to invest in yeah. designing, getting that feedback, all of that yeah. before you actually go down the path of like spending a lot of time designing yeah. something. And, so, you, and you can really quickly turn this into more high fidelity, start adding to it, yep. um, and then reshare that link as well. Yep. Awesome. Cool. Okay, we have one called Flexi Jobs. Mm -hmm. So, are you looking for a gig or hire candidates with ease? And then you've got all these different companies down here that are using it. I like that. It gives some um, like credit to the to the site that other people are using it. Um, I like the color palette for the whole thing. It's just like three colors. I love um, the illustrations yeah. too. They're really like fun and easy, soft mm -hmm. and approachable. This is the scrollable see, artboard. We've got 26 artboards here actually. It's a lot of work. So I think see. it's scrollable, right? You oh, can. let's see. Oh, we've got some. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Said. Okay. So we've got some recommended jobs. Mm -hmm. um, we've got cards in here. Um, Millions of gigs, pick the right one. So some information to help you find the right one. Um, get nice. the best talent for your project, how we work. So how I think it's how this program works. You can get that in three steps. And then advanced projects, payments, nice. analytics, and even a footer. This is really nice. I love the, the clean color palette and it's really approachable. I think it animates the next screen. Yeah, I'm so excited I for saw that. When I clicked about us, Ooh. it did a really nice transition. I hope that comes over nicely on the screen. I um, see someone's been using auto animate. That <laughs> yeah. makes me happy. That's awesome. But does it have a background blur? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> <laughs> Howard, he still points for animating, even yeah. if it doesn't have the background blur. <laughs> cool. We scroll down, you can see some reviews. So this is really awesome. Next link, next link. Okay, let's click on how it works. Oh. Some more <laughs> animations. Just feel like I need to provide like the sound yeah. effect for it when it animates. One cool thing would be to maybe fix this header to the top, mm -hmm. so that way when I scroll, I can still access those links. Yeah. But just a small detail there. And then I can go ahead and click back here. And I think there are probably some links in here that I. Yeah, maybe a good idea going forward is to like turn on hotspot hints. Yeah. Um, just so that you know, we make sure we actually get through your whole prototype. Let's see. Uh, worst case, we'll just use the arrows. Yeah, I'm just gonna skip. Forward. We've seen these. So let's see. Here hmm. we have. Okay, so we've got like. I think this is like a different part of the project. It's almost like an, oh yeah, a like, dashboard. Exactly. Maybe you've gone into it. Maybe I missed that somewhere. So you have your overview. Um, it tells you how many projects you have. Look, we had some time transitions here. Did mm -hmm. you see that? I see that. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's click through. Cool. And then here you can see your current, your completed tasks, and disputes, which doesn't have a link. So that's a good thing. And hotspot tins <laughs> are turned on. So yeah. that, that's a good thing. My bad. I thought yeah, yeah. they were turned off. Oh, yes. They are on. Um, we've got... Well, I want to see what happens when you drag that little slider. I don't know. It's not or tap. This might be a user error here. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Maybe it's like the hit area is really small for it. Yeah. Maybe it's the arrow. Maybe. Let me try. That, so that's something to be mindful mm -hmm. of. Hit areas sometimes can make things a little challenging for your viewer or your stakeholder. But now I want to know what that toggle does. <laughs> I'm sure. I, I need closure on this. <laughs> I want to know what the toggle switch does. We'll come back to it. <laughs> Got a new project. Um, let's take a look at messages. Wow, this is really nice. So you can see someone's typing. You've got you know all of the chat elements here. Really beautiful. 
go into the train. I'm really impressed with how much work you guys have gotten done. Yeah. Super detailed. Um, we can click on a card here. Look at this. Oh, and we've you know got the thing I love the most cool. about this? What? Is like this is a prototype in the browser. And like at some point you just forget that you're in the browser and totally. it just feels like, are you an XT? Totally. And I can, uh, you know, I could make some comments on here, yeah. but I'm going to. You know, you can close it and, and be more full mm -hmm. screen, so. And that's such a smart hack. Like, he's fixed everything except that one section. Yeah. So, it, like, you can actually scroll through that. Yeah. Uh, this is amazing work. Yeah. Super detailed. Oh, click sign in button. Click the sign in button. Where? Here? Here? Maybe at the home? I think that's, let's see. Yeah. yeah. Oh. oh. There we go. There we go. Thank you. Okay, so now I can sign up. Ooh. Nice. I can you log in. I can switch to client. Okay, let's go back to log in and log in. And then you land on the overview. Okay. Wow. And he says just click the slider. So when we go, we need to go back to the okay. slider. Okay. Let's see, where was that? Here. There we go. Oh, oh, there okay. you go. <laughs> well, it takes more than a PM and a designer to figure that out. <laughs> I don't know how that didn't work before. It's working perfectly now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's amazing. That's some really cool yeah. stuff. Yeah. I love that. You can see as you slide this on, the new button is active. All right. I hope we're not missing anything. We can check out settings. Oh, I think there was, we can check out wallet. That sounds cool. Ooh. Ooh. Does the graph animate? Yeah. Um, I don't think so. I love to see the graph anime. Yeah. That's fine. And, and yeah, but it's super cool here. You yeah. can see it, it makes your finances actually look fun. <laughs> <laughs> Math is tough. Cool. And then we'll take a look at settings. And here you have all your information. You can change. That's pretty cool. Tons yeah. of work here. Great job. Yeah. Okay, so here's another one we have. It says select. Am I supposed to select it? Oh, yeah. I, I liked how that just animated I, yeah. it. I, I want to do that once <laughs> okay, more. Let's, let's go back. Again. It's let's super satisfying. Let's see. I can reload it. Oh, okay, hold on. I'm going to go home. We'll full screen it again. Okay, ready? Ooh. I feel it's nice. <laughs> I love the gradient here, and I love how it matches it mm -hmm. in the text here as well. And that was a really awesome use of animation. Mm -hmm. Do we have any more? I think that's it in that one. Oh, it's a two-page thing? Yeah, I think so. It's still worth it. Yeah. It made me go, wow. Yeah, super uh, satisfying. That's actually, that's a nice little subtle animation for like, you know, if you pre-populate yeah. fields because you've remembered yeah. username and password. I yeah. actually like that. It's pretty Super awesome. slick, yeah. yeah. As Sam said. <laughs> okay, and then um, let's see, we have a movie box, XD Daily Challenge. So this is on Behance. We've got, um, so we've got just three overview pages, it looks like. We have, you know, home here where you have kind of a list of different movies and then a detail page, it looks like. And um, I'm not sure, maybe some like recommendations. Looks like Tim saying you can click on the login button. Oh. For the previous one, I'm guessing. I okay, think we sorry, we'll just go back real yeah. quick. Login. Ah, okay. So it's not just on. Ooh, there. okay. Okay. Yeah, most we clean. Some work. We're sorry, Tim. We're sorry, going Tim. back there. We missed <laughs> those. So, what would you like to play? If I click on this. I can get some suggestions for my search. I can click on one of those and go nice. to a detail page. Super cool. So this is about gaming. It looks like. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't know much about games, so we'll, I'll do my best to, to talk about this. This is your chance to ask Hillary everything <laughs> you want to know about games. <laughs> I can go ahead and I think there was a hot spot here. Oh, I, I decided to buy it. I think something happened here. Let's do that again. Or maybe I can't. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like it's downloading. My hot 
spot hints are not doing anything anymore. Let's see. I think mm. think we got it all. Mm, hope so. Let's see. But but if we scroll down, you see these awesome images. Yeah. I like the, the fact that we have a fixed like nav bar yeah. on the left and then the button on the top. Yeah, it's a good really use nice. of of um, fixed yeah. elements. Cool. For sure. Awesome. Cool. Okay, back to our movie box. Um, let's see, I think I zoomed in here. Okay, so the challenge, design and prototype a movie application. The following features, so we have a splash screen, a login experience, a home screen, hamburger menu, browse movies, video player, let's dive in and look. So we've got a logo made, I like the light and the dark version we have here. Uh, we even have a design system, which is super cool. So we've got our topography here, our color palette, nice clean color palette. Um, some yeah. icons used throughout, some components used. We've I got hope the so. Buttons mm -hmm. and some on and off switches. I love seeing that. Some different cards that are gonna be reused, it looks like and then the splash screen and login screens. This is cool, it's like old time movie <laughs> login. I love that. Countdown. And then... That, that would actually make a really awesome yeah. splash screen for yeah. like a movie app. Yeah, that would be really cool to see animate as well. Hey, Harvard, do you want to animate that? <laughs> um, so here we're using some of those button components. You can see the dark logos being used. I love seeing how you broke out those design system elements and then utilized it through the screens. Really nice. And this is all super clean. You've got like the main call to actions with like the color that stands out the most. And then we get to our main screens, our navigation and search. So. Here we've got our overview page. Love having these apps with like heavy content. It's just so fun to look at the images that people choose. Detail screen. Really like how it, you know, it fades kind of over the image yeah. and you've got the text here and it's still super legible. It's really nice. And then here you've got your settings. I love the avatar, it's super cool. And your search field. Again, another use of landscape. Nice. It's really awesome. See the full screen player. Now I just wanna go watch movies. And we've got some awesome oh, animations. That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Hey Howard, no need. Yeah, we think already it's already it. animated. That's that's awesome. Yeah. I love that loading screen. Let's see if it goes again. It probably loop back. I'm guessing. Yeah. Here we go. Oh my god, that Three, is so two, good. One. Yeah, that's really awesome. <laughs> love it. Yeah. I love the scrolling here. This is super cool. Yeah, all of those auto animated use cases are pretty dope. And, and we actually have an embedded prototype. Why is it a video again? Yeah. I love it. I think we have the whole thing in one here. But I, I, I love your use of breaking it up here. Yeah. So that it's, you know, for someone who's going through quickly can get an overview of the full yep. app. It's a really nice presentation. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, I'm super impressed with all of these. Yeah. Okay, and our last one, I think this is actually an update from what we saw yesterday. Mobla. So, yeah, so yesterday we saw um, this kind of like uh, booking app. So mm -hmm. we have experience and attractions. We've got the header here. Let's see, we've got some cool animations when you click on the button. Yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's a drag. Oh, look at that. Nice. Nice. I'm actually not sure how I did that. Oh, I think it's you a drag. Yeah, it's a drag. drag. Okay. I think you died cool. once more. Let's try again. I'm not sure if I'm going in the wrong direction. 
And we've got the, that's super cool. And we have black background blur. Mm -hmm. Is it a green <laughs> one? I don't know. It just, it just sort of I, I think it. it's both. It's like I can drag in this direction and then. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Huh. It's super cool. Yeah. Like, can you click on any of the tabs on Let's the top? See. Or is it like a scrollable artboard? Mm -mm. This is great. Just yeah. like having a time that loops between the carousel. That's, yeah. that's awesome. I love that you submitted this again and we can see the updates from yesterday yeah. as well. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So, so sounds like, yeah. Yeah, we, we will announce the winner of the um, daily challenge tomorrow. And again, we'll... Oh. oh, is there? Sorry, there's one more. There's Just one gonna more. Take a look at Chris's. All right, it's loading. We've got an ESPN app. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I think I just let me just re missed what that was. Okay, well, I think there was like a loading screen that looked super cool. Um, now, if I go in, I can see these are some time transitions. I'm Ooh. not doing anything. And you can see oh my down God. below, this is awesome. You can see the schedule animating uh, below. Let's see what else we can do. You can. Yeah, I think even the card, those are all dragged. The cards can be dragged because I saw the cursor oh, change. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, like... What something can be dragged. Oh, I can scroll. Ooh. Oh, this is a great scroll. example of like a fixed header and yeah. a footer on the same article. Yeah, that's a super clean header. I love that. Um, we can click on something and it jumps you back to the top. That's nice. What is draggable? I feel like, I feel like you saw something. Oh, this was probably Chris Cannon's file. Yeah. Chris, is this you? <laughs> you messing around with us, sending us oh, prototypes with broken legs. It broke the animation. <laughs> <laughs> I love it though. This is really nice. I loved that auto transition mm -hmm. when we came in. That's awesome. Cool. cool. So tomorrow we will be announcing the winner for this. Mm -hmm. And we'll also be doing some portfolio reviews. Yeah. And then we'll talk a little bit more about collaboration again tomorrow. Um, look at certain plugins that uh, allow you to collaborate like Slack and Jira with XD. Uh, I know we didn't touch upon After Effects today, so I'll cover that tomorrow. Um, and then yes, we will sneak one of the June features. It's yeah. a prototyping feature, that's all I'll tell you. It's one of Jonathan's features. Yes. <laughs> Jessica, tune in tomorrow. <laughs> We'll sneak. I'll, I'll bring some toast as well. <laughs> All right. Was there anything else you wanted to cover today? Um, I think that's it. So just to recap, yesterday we looked at components, how you, know, how you can collaborate between designers and between documents. Um, today we looked at collaborating with your stakeholders. Yep. And um, with some of the other apps in XD. And then tomorrow we'll be taking a look at some plugins and uh, you know some external sources that you can use for collaboration. Oh, and even uh, using XT as um, presentation. a presentation tool, right? So we we'll talk about some of those use cases. So definitely tune in tomorrow. Still a lot of goodness left, and the June release sneak. Yeah. All right. Thanks, All right. everyone. Thanks. Bye.